Dear student, this is the first lecture about the epithelial tissue. In our body, we have four different types of basic tissue. These tissues are the connective tissue, epithelial tissue, nervous tissue, and muscular tissue. We are there going are certain to start characters by the epithelial features. tissue. In the epithelial tissue. What are these characters? First, as we see here in this diagram, the epithelial cell shows minimal intercellular substance. Intercellular substance is the substance present between the cells. In the epithelial tissue, this uh, substance is minimal in amount. Also, we can see that the cells are connected to each other by structures known as cell junction. Epithelial cells rest on a sheet-like structure known as basement membrane. Also, we can see here that the blood vessels are present in the underlying connective tissue. They do not penetrate in between the epithelial tissue or the epithelial cells. But we can see that the nerve fibers in the yellow color can penetrate between the epithelial cells. There are three germ layers in our body, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Epithelium is derived from all three germ layers because the epithelium, for example, the epithelial lining in, uh, of the oral cavity might be different from uh, that of the glandular epithelium. So epithelium is derived from all three germ cells. It might be derived from ectoderm, mesoderm, or endoderm. <coughs> what are the different types of epithelium? There are four main types of epithelium. First, the surface or the lined epithelium. This epithelium is the epithelium that cover our body surface or line any cavities in our body. For example, covering of the body as the skin or lining cavities as the lining of the uh, gastrointestinal tract or the respiratory tract. The second type is the glandular epithelium. The third type is a neuroepithelium and lastly the myoepithelium. We are going to start first by the surface epithelium or the covering epithelium, which is given another name. It is named as epithelial membranes. The epithelial membranes are divided according to what? According to number of the cell layers. If this epithelium is formed of one layer only, we call it simple epithelium. But if it is formed of more than two layers, we call it stratified epithelium. Strata means layer in Latin. The epithelial cells may have different shapes. It might be squamous. Squamous means flattened cells with flat nuclei. Or it might be cuboidal. Looks like a cube with central rounded nuclei. Or it might be columnar cells. Looks like the column, its length is more than it's wet, and they have basal oval nuclei. So the epithelial membranes or the covering or the lining epithelium can be divided into two types, simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. Simple epithelium will be named according to the shape of the forming cells. Simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, and pseudo-stratified columnar. The stratified epithelium will be named according to the shape of the epical layer. If the epical layer is a squamous, so we are going to call it stratified squamous, stratified cubical, stratified columnar, and transitional epithelium. There are four different types of simple epithelium according to the name of the according to the shape of the forming cell. Simple squamous, one layer of flattened cells with flat nuclei, simple cuboidal. Simple, Simple squamous epithelium is formed of one layer of flattened cells with flat nuclei. What are the sites of the simple squamous epithelium? Simple squamous epithelium is present lining the blood vessels, and in this case, it is called endothelium. Also, it is present in the lining of the alveoli. Lining of the lining alveoli is simple squamous epithelium. Also, the simple squamous epithelium is present forming the serous membrane like pleura, peritoneum, and pericardium. And in this case, it is called mesothelium. The second type is the simple cuboidal epithelium, formed of one layer of cuboidal cells with cuboidal-shaped cells with central rounded nuclei. 
What are the sites of simple cuboidal epithelium? It is present in thyroid follicles. What is thyroid follicles? It is structures, rounded structures, forming the uh, structure of the thyroid gland. These uh, follicles are formed or lined by simple cuboidal cells. The third type of simple columnar of simple epithelium is the simple columnar epithelium, formed of one layer simple of columnar, columnar cells with basal or further or subdivided into unspecialized or unmodified type, just simple columnar cells. This type is present in the lining of the ducts of salivary gland, or it may be modified or specialized. For example, it may be modified for secretion, so kill it simple columnar secretory epithelium like that of the lining of the stomach or it may be modified or specialized in absorption to, to perform this function the apical part of the cell is provided by structures called microvilli which are finger right projections increases the surface area for absorption also the simple columnar epithelium might be ciliated its apical surface is provided by cilia and it is present in uh, the lining epithelium This is the structure of the, of the microvilli and the structure of the cilia. And you have studied uh, in details uh, the structure of both types in uh, the cytology uh, lecture. The last type of the simple epithelium is called pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. In this type of cell, as we see here in the diagram, we have two types of cells. We have tall cells and short cells. The tall cells reach the surface, while the short cells do not reach the surface. Both of them are resting on a basement membrane. Their nuclei are present at different levels. So we have two levels of nuclei. Here is an upper level and here is a lower level. This gives an impression that this type of epithelium is formed of more than one layer, but actually it is a single layer. So it gives us a false impression of being stratified. So we call it pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. Also this type, might be non-ciliated or it might be ciliated with goblet cells and we call it pseudo-stratified columnar ciliated with goblet cells like that cells present lining the trachea and bronchi or it, may, it might be provided with stereocilia. Stereocilia are long immotile microvilli. They are not true cilia and you know the details or you have studied the details of uh, structure of stereocilia in the cytology course. So we have pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium with stereocilia present in a structure called epididymis, which is part of the male genital tract. This is the respiratory epithelium, pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium, but it is provided with goblet cells and also provided with cilia. Now we have finished this, the uh, classification or the different types of simple epithelium and we are going to study what are the types of stratified epithelium. It is named again according to the shape of the apical layer. So we have four types, stratified squamous, cuboidal and stratified columnar and transitional. The first type of stratified epithelium is called stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. This type of epithelium is formed of basal columnar cells three to four layers of middle polygonal or polyhedral cells, and finally a top layer of squamous epithelium. So it is not provided by keratin, and we call it stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. It is present in the lining of any tract or any tube opening on the surface, for example, the oral cavity. The second the type is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, the same as the previous type, but the top layer is provided by keratin. Squamous cells by time start to accumulate a protein called keratin, losing its nuclei and then transform it into a keratin layer. This type provides, as we see, more protection. So it is present in the epidermis of the skin. Again, this is a photomicrograph of the two different types of stratified squamous epithelium. This is the stratified keratinized type where a thick layer of keratin is present at the top, and this is the non-keratinized type. The third type of stratified epithelium is the stratified cuboidal epithelium. It is formed of just two layers of cuboidal cells present in the lining of ducts of the salivary glands. Then stratified columnar epithelium. The top layer here is columnar cell, 
Also, it is present in the lining of ducts of salivary glands uh, and also in certain parts of the male urethra. The last type of stratified epithelium is called transitional epithelium. It has another name, uroepithelium, because it is present lining the urinary system. This type of epithelium has the capacity to change its number of forming layers. The number of layers could be reduced, so it is present in the organs liable for distension, like the urinary bladder. This type of epithelium is formed of basal columnar cells, then middle polygonal or polyhedral cells, then a top layer of dome-shaped cells. This dome-shaped cells has rounded surface or rounded apical surface, and it might be also binucleated. This is the top layer or, or the dome-shaped cells. So if you have a tissue section, how can you identify that this type is a transitional epithelium? You're going to look to the top layer. If you have rounded nuclei, this type so of epithelium, epithelium, transitional transitional epithelium is present in the organs liable for distension or stretch like the urinary bladder. If the bladder is empty, you can see that the layers are six to eight as we can see here. But when the bladder becomes full, what happens? We can see here that the apical layer or the dome-shaped layer will be flattened and also the cells of the middle layer will slide or glide over each other, so the number of layers will be reduced. This will give more space for urine to accumulate. Again, we have finished the surface or the lining epithelium, and we are going now to discuss the other three types, glandular epithelium, neuro, and myoepithelium. Glandular epithelium. The glandular epithelium actually is derived from the surface epithelial cells. The surface epithelial cells start to proliferate and invade the underlying connective tissue. These proliferating cells may still connect it with the surface by a duct, and this will form what is known as the exocrine glands. Exocrine glands are connected with the, with the surface by ducts or the eye provided by ducts or these dividing cells might lose its connection with the surface and they draw or they uh, put their secretion into the surrounding blood vessels. So they have no connection with the surface, they have no ducts, and this is what constitute what is called the endocrine glands. Some glands may be mixed, like the pancreas, it may have an exocrine part and endocrine part. We are going to study the exocrine gland and how are they classified. They might be classified according to the nature or the uh, type of secretion they produce into serous glands, mucous glands, and mix it. Or it may be classified according to the way or the method or the mode of secretion into merocrine, apocrine, and holocrine glands. And also they can be classified according to the shape of the secretory unit and the branching of the duct. The first classification of the exocrine gland is according to the nature or the type of secretion they produce, serous, mucus, and mixed gland. Mucus gland, their nature of secretion is viscid secretion or thick secretion or waxy secretion. And the serous gland producing secretion, which is more or less watery secretion, looks like water, and it is rich in enzymes. Mixed gland, they produce two types of secretions. Then the second classification is according to the mode of secretion, how the exocrine gland uh, produces its secretion. The first mode of secretion is called merocrine secretion. In this case, the secretion is accumulated inside a vesicles, and these vesicles are released from the apical cell membrane by a process of exocytosis. So we call it a merocrine gland. And by this way, most of the glands in our body or most of the sweat glands act. The second type is called apocrine secretion. Apo, it means that the apical part of the cell containing the secretion will going to be uh, released. This means that the loss, there is loss of an apical part of the cell. The example of this type of secretion occurs in mammary gland. Then the last type of secretion is called holocrine, means that the whole cell is being lost with the secretion. This occurs in the spacious gland. And as we can see here, this is the merocrine secretion, and this is the apocrine secretion, and this is the holocrine secretion. Then according to the shape of the secretory unit and branching of the duct system, if the 
duct system is non-branched or a single duct, we call this type of gland a simple gland. But if the duct system is branched, we call it compound gland. Then we are going to name it according to the shape of the secretory unit. There are three different shapes. The secretory unit might be tubular in shape, or it might be alveolar or acinar in shape, or it might be a mix in between. Part is a tube ending by an acinar or alveolus, so we call it tubulo-alveolar. Then we want, if we want to name it, we are going to look first to the shape or to the, uh, the branching of the duct system. If we have simple or already single duct, we are going to call it simple. And then we look to the shape of the secretory unit. If it is tubular, so this gland are classified as simple tubular. And so on. The third type of uh, epithelium is called the neuroepithelium. From its name, means that this type of epithelium can receive sensation or can receive stimuli. It is formed of three main types, supporting cells, sensory cells, and basal cells. These basal cells act like a stem cell and can regenerate what are the, the different sensory types cells of neuroepithelium. Neuroepithelium is present in our uh, tongue, covering our tongue, in a structure called uh, uh, taste buds, which receive the different tastes. Also, it is present on the uh, olfactory epithelium, which is uh, the epithelium lining the, uh, uh, and the nose. Also, it is present in the inner ear. So all these are the different sites of the epithelium. The last type of, of epithelium is called myoepithelium, and from its name, we can predict that it acts like the muscle. Myo means muscle. So this type of epithelium can contract like that, like the uh, muscle, uh, muscle cells. Because it's the cytoplasm of this type of epithelium is provided with actin and myosin filaments, so it has a contractile function. These myoepithelial cells having a shape of star shape or a basket-like, uh, and they are present surrounding the uh, secretory cells of the exocrine glands, so they can, when they contract, they can push the secretion through the ducts. Thank you.